So um, slightly different project today before I finish off the power supply, which I do have the new capacitors for. So this is a sort of a new project, but a quick one and a short one in theory. So what I'm making is a VGA dummy adapter. Um, I've, uh, I've got a DVI, which is this style of connector, um, a DVI connector on this side, and on the other side I've got VGA. Now this is going to go into a DVI card, so this will plug into a DVI card. Um, and the purpose of this um, VGA dummy adapter is so that you can turn on your computer and you can remote connect to it and change resolutions and uh, screen resolutions, things like screen resolutions, things like that. And you don't um, need to hook up a monitor. So it's for headerless, as it's called, a headerless computer system. Now, you can buy expensive devices to do this, or you can buy one of these little DVI to VGA adapters and put three resistors in it of the right value, and you can then um, create your own dummy adapter. Now, if I just take this, um, let's take this little resistor out here. There we go. You can see that this, this uh, SVGA connector here, if you look at the way the dot pattern is, you have three rows of dots, and they're kind of ar they're arranged in an arrow pointing, in this case, as we look at the picture, from the left to the right. So the arrow is pointing to the right. Now the way that your resistors go in, well, first of all, you, you get yourself some resistors, which in this case, I think um, the correct value, if you can try and get, is 75 ohm resistors. You need, you'll need three of them. Um, 68 or 82 ohm will do. I believe these ones here I've got are 62 ohm. In fact, I should probably check that by validating it. There are apps on an iPhone where you can look at the color bands and it will tell you exactly what the ohm resistance is of the resistor. But anyway, you will need three of these. Now, where you insert them into the device is that you basically... It's these... So I'll show you on here these... This pin, you bridge between this pin and this pin with one resistor, then this pin and this pin with another resistor, and then this pin and this pin with another resistor. So with three resistors, you can effectively make a dummy VGA adapter, which if you plug into the graphics card will mean that it thinks it's got a monitor attached, and then when you log in with remote services, you can change resolutions in theory. So I'm going, just gonna try this out. So the first one I'm going to insert. So let's give that a go. Okay, let's skew that a bit there, but um, you get the idea. So let's shove that one in. There we go, that's one. But actually, I think what I'm going to do first of all is I'm not going to do that one, I'm going to do the middle one first. Um, like so. There we go. So I don't know if you can clearly see that, but I bridged the middle two ones. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a small amount of... Um, now I'm not going to glue this in. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit of rubber insulator on one of the... Uh, one of the resistors here to make sure it's insulated from the others. So I'm going to use a little bit of heat shrink to do that. Uh, see the right size heat shrink that I can find. Uh, hmm. Let's try a bit of this one. Okay, so I've got a little bit of sh heat shrink here that I'm let me pull that back into view so that you can see it properly. I don't know whether it's, which angle is it better to really see it at, but um, yeah. Okay. Let's try that. Yeah. Well, okay. Now let's get a little bit of heat shrink, which is suitable for covering it up. Now this is, um, let's have a look at this. If we look at the heat shrink tube, well, you can really see that with the focus, but let's try and flatten it out a bit. Heat shrink tubing has a temperature rating on it. Now I think this one is 125 degrees C, so that means in order for it to shrink properly, I need 125 degrees C. So I'm just gonna test that on the resistor, yes, that will definitely cover it. I mean, I could probably go a little bit smaller than that. Um, well, yeah, let's try and get a little bit smaller. I'm about to run out of battery on my iPhone, so there may be a break in this while I recharge the phone or plug it in or something. But I'm hoping to get this video done and get away with it before it, um, before it conks out. Okay, so let's keep going for the moment.
Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, that looks good. All right, and let's pan that over so we know that that's where that needs trimming off. Oh, put it back in the middle one again. Hmm. Okay, I just need to get myself a pair of scissors and then we can uh, uh, cut this to fit. Okay, so let's slip that bit of heat shrink on there. Then I will turn on my hot air. Uh, I need to plug my hot air in. As per usual, everything is always more complicated. Plug that in. Okay, so let's lift that off. 125, Okay, I think that will do. That's reasonably well shrunk on. Now, I should have this thing where my should have this thing where my it's a reed switch in my hot air gun that will automatically turn it off. Doesn't seem to be doing it at the moment, so I'm just going to turn it off manually. Um, right, let's insert the other resistors, and hopefully we'll not run out of battery in that time. So there's one. And then, because that one's insulated, I'm not going to insulate the other so dramatically. Uh, let's think, I think it can go on this side, like so. Yeah, I need more light on this situation. I mean, this is all sort of amateur amateur hour cinematography. I'm just starting up and doing these things in, in, the, in the hope that they're useful to somebody. Um, but, um, yeah, production value can always increase and probably will in this case. All right, so there we go, we've got our two resistors in there. So I think I'm gonna shrink wrap cover the whole lot now with a different um, larger heat shrink. Let's see if I can find that. That's a lot, that's quite a large one. Yeah, I think that looks appropriate. Okay, so we've got another bit of shrink wrap here, which hopefully can go around all three. Mm. Just about, okay. I'm going to trim that down a bit. Just trim that off, off camera. My grotty ciseaux. Grotty ciseaux. Yeah, there we go. All right, trimmed off a little bit. All right, let's do that again. Showing it on camera, am I? Like the idiot that I am. Got to remember to look through the lens. Or in this case, look through the display. So many tiny foibles in being a YouTuber, of which I'm not experienced. 
not that I wish to desperately be a YouTuber to be honest with you, but um, I'm not sure this is ever going to appeal to anybody except an extremely small number of people. Okay. As, I think that's about as shrunk on as it's going to be. It should be enough. Okay. Okay, so let's have a look. Looks reasonable. Looks reasonable. So we've got it in the right pins. I think it's now time to test it. Okay, so that is basically how you make a dummy VGA connector. It's not very elegant. I mean, I might could goop some gloop over it, but at least this method is, you know, the resistors are insulated from each other. And in theory, um, I can recover this adapter if I want to and convert it back into a set of resistors or, you know, a standard DVI to SVGA plug. But that should, should be sufficient to fool the computer into imagining that it's got a display connected and therefore I can control resolutions and it'll act as a... Um, a dummy resolution, a dummy monitor, so that it can act in a headless mode but still have lots of capabilities as though it had a monitor attached. Fantastic. All right. I hope that helps somebody. All right. Bye bye.